So welcome to this uh, tutorial. Uh, we're going to talk about the indications and contraindications or caveats of using the fractional excretion of sodium. Uh, we want you to understand when it's appropriate to apply this mathematical formula to patients who have renal disease um, and when you can get thrown off or misled based on the results of the calculation. So we commonly use the fractional excretion of sodium when we have a patient who's got who has acute renal failure. So let me indicate that as here, acute renal failure, otherwise known as a rise in the serum creatinine. And we want to know whether it's one of two types, whether it's pre-renal or ATN. And the reason we want to know this is because these are the two most common etiologies for acute renal failure. Most common etiology for acute renal failure in the outpatient setting is pre-renal azotemia, and in the inpatient setting is ATN. So if you can distinguish between these two, you're most likely going to come up with the correct etiology for the acute renal failure. And we do that by calculating the fractional excretion of sodium, which we discussed in a previous tutorial. And we say that pre-renal patients have a fractional excretion of sodium that's less than 1%, and ATN patients have a fractional excretion of sodium greater than 1%. The assumption here is that a normal quote-unquote fractional excretion of sodium is about 1 or 2%. Now we're going to talk about why that's not true in all patients and the reason uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. The first thing we should discuss is how the kidney handles sodium. Uh, the kidney's job is to maintain a uh, volume balance or, or euvolemia in the body and it does that by regulating the amount of sodium that is kept within the body and excreted. And so in a normal diet the kidney will uh, excrete about one or two percent of the sodium and hold on to the rest of the sodium that was initially filtered through the glomerulus. So if you've got yourself a glomerulus here Get your afferent arterial here and your efferent arterial here and you've got sodium that is filtered here. There's a, lot, a tremendous amount of sodium that's filtered here. It's a small cation and there's a very high glomerular filtration rate so the total milliequivalence of sodium that's filtered is quite high and it's the kidney's job down below in the proximal tubule and the distal tubule to reabsorb the majority of that sodium and excrete only the extra sodium that's not needed. So you can imagine how you could get a very high fractional excretion of sodium. If you had a diet that was high in salt and you had normal functioning kidneys, then you would expect that person, say yourself after having lunch, to have a very high fractional excretion of sodium. Because if you didn't excrete the excess sodium that you just ate, you'd become a demodist and you wouldn't have euvolemia, you'd be hypervolemic. So the first uh, caveat to using the fractional excretion of sodium is you've got to be sure that there's no other reason for why a patient would have a high fractional excretion of sodium. Because if there is, then you're not going to be able to tell whether the patient has ATN or just had a high uh, salty meal. And the way we do that is the following. Let's break this up right here. down a little bit. Let's just clear the screen so we can start fresh. Um, so the way we determine um, if someone has a high fractional excretion of sodium other than ATN, so fractional excretion high other than ATN would be to look at the urine output. And that's actually one of the best measures. If you have a patient has a very high urine output, say greater than 400 cc's in a 24-hour period, that patient should not have a fractional excretion of sodium performed because you'll be misled. You will probably get a fractional excretion of sodium that is high, in other words, greater than 1%, but you wouldn't know if their acute renal failure is due to ATN or simply having too much salt in their diet or receiving too much saline, for example. So the first uh, 
contraindication, relative contraindication to using the fractional excretion of sodium is that the patient must be oliguric, which I'm defining as less than 400 cc's of urine in a 24-hour period. If they've got more than that, in other words, if they're non-oliguric acute renal failure, you're going to be misled when you calculate your fractional excretion of sodium. So be sure that the patients are oliguric before you even bother calculating the fractional excretion. So that's the first caveat. Now the second caveat. Uh, I indicated earlier that we assume that the fractional excretion of sodium normally is anywhere between 1 and 2 percent. And we know how to calculate the fractional excretion of sodium. Uh, we learned that in a prior tutorial, but briefly I'll just show you. It's the amount of sodium excreted over the amount of sodium filtered. And it's this formula right here that's going to lead us right into the second relative contraindication for using or calculating a fractional excretion of sodium. It's this area right here, the sodium filter. If you've got a kidney, and again, here's your afferent arterial and your efferent arterial, and this is the sodium that you filter. If you have a patient who has chronic kidney disease, oops, chronic kidney disease, they have a diminished GFR, which means their ability to filter solutes has gone down, including their ability to filter sodium. That makes this number here low, and because it's in the denominator, it makes this entity here high. So patients who have CKD don't have a normal FENA of 1 to 2 percent. Their fractional excretion of sodium normally is a lot higher than 2 percent. But nobody really knows what it is because it's different for different degrees of CKD. So if you have a patient who's got CKD at baseline and now has developed oliguric acute renal failure, you don't know what their quote-unquote normal fractional excretion should be in order to determine if they're truly pre-renal or they have ATN superimposed on CKD. Say you come back uh, with a FENA. Let's clean that up a little bit. Say you have a patient with CKD who has superimposed oliguric renal failure and you appropriately calculate a FENA of about 4%. Well, if the patient did not have CKD, you'd know that pheno is way too high. Most likely the patient's suffering from ATN. But given that the patient has CKD, you don't know if this is the baseline or the quote normal amount of, uh, of the fractional excretion of sodium uh, for this patient or not. And so this is another relative contraindication to using the fractional excretion of sodium, you have to be mindful of what the patient's underlying renal function is. If it was normal, then you can accurately interpret your FENA. If it was abnormal, in other words, the patient has CKD, then you're going to have some difficulty interpreting your fractional excretion results. And you might want to do serial fractional excretions because that's a better way to monitor your patient's um, renal function and imp and whether your patient's improving than just one calculated value of a fractional excretion of sodium. And so that's, uh, well, those are the two main relative contraindications or caveats to using the fractional excretion of sodium. And if you need to know more about how we calculated the fractional excretion of sodium, we have a prior tutorial that you can see as well. Thank you very much.